Valhalla, Valhall, the hall of the slain, the hall of the battle fallen, the hall of the victorious dead. This is a place of eternal existence that we see spoken about in Norse lore and mythology, and in modern times tends to be something that is romanticized and overhyped as a place of eternal glorious existence. In today's video, I'm going to offer you my insight as to why I don't think we, or you, are going to Valhalla. Let's get into today's video. All right, everybody, hail and welcome back to another episode of Midgard Musings. Thank you so much for joining me today. My name is Jesse, and I am the host here on this channel. If you are interested in subject matter that kind of circulates around Norse uh, mythology, Norse heathenry, Germanic paganism, all that sort of things, I invite you to please write down here, click on that subscribe button, and then if you don't want to miss anything that I put out here on this channel, make sure that you click the bell notification and you'll be notified every time that I upload new content. Uh, everybody, today's video is going to be something that I've just had on my mind for a while. I'm sure it's been on the minds of a lot of folks that uh, watch my content. Um, I've seen a lot of different feedback uh, of this particular subject, but it is the, the concept or the subject uh, of, it's a little bit of a touchy one, all right, because I know a lot of people have their own individual views on things, um, about us as modern heathens. Do we go to Valhalla when we die? Uh, is there even an opportunity for us as modern heathens to go to Valhalla when we die? Um, so big disclaimer before we get into the discussion today. Um, what you are going to be hearing from me and my presentation to you today is going to be largely based off of my own UPG stuff, okay? Um, yes, I try to pull from historical sources and develop my own view of the world based off of those things. I, I'm kind of a mixed uh, type of heathen. I'm not what you would call a hardcore recon. I don't stick to the 100% true uh, ways of our ancient ancestors and I also don't just go off of the whim and be all like neo-pagany about stuff either. I am very uh, strong in my uh, research with, with when it comes to the historical sides but I think that the only way that we can grow is to grow forward and grow onward and upward and, and we have to have our strength in our roots um, but we can't be so root bound that we're of no use. So. Forewarning and 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 you know just kind of that uh, disclaimer. Uh, what you're going to hear from me is my own UPG. Okay, um, don't take what I say and think that well, no, but because Jesse said it on Midgard Musings that this is the way it is. Please do your own research, and if you are so inclined and you want to share your research findings, head down into the comment section and share it with myself and everybody else that watches these videos. I think I know myself. I can speak for myself. I would love to hear what you guys have to say about this subject. So, the concept of Valhalla, okay, Valhall, the Hall of the Slain, the Hall of the Dead, the, the slain dead, the battle dead, uh, those who have fallen in battle. We've seen a lot of memes, we've seen a lot of things pop up in our, in our modern, you know, meme culture uh, here in modern times in this 21st century of, um, you know, people who suffer uh, uh, different battles in life, you know, they're, they're going through hard times, whether it be psychological, whether it be spiritual battles, whether it be this, that, or the other, and they, you know, we've, we've, we've seen memes, we've seen things pop up that um, give rise to the idea or the concept that those individuals have a place in Odin's Hall that we read about in the lore and that we read about in the stories and in the mythology. And the idea of a place of existence, of an eternal existence, uh, for those who have died in their physical selves, uh, to exist in a place that, that is constantly in a state of conflict. There, there is, there, it's, it's, like a, it's like a boot camp, if you will. You know, the purpose for Valhalla in the lore was to prepare the army, the Ein Heriar, Odin's armies, to fight in Ragnarok. That's what we read about in the lore. Now... I don't think, and I've never thought, that anybody who is not of a warrior class, who is not a fighter, who is not battle-worthy, um, would ever be considered by Odin 
Um, and, and considering the fact that Odin gets the second pick of the Fallen Slain, right? He doesn't even get the first pick of the Fallen uh, Warriors on the battlefield. It's Freya who gets the Fallen Slain, the first pick, uh, to Folkvogner. And then Odin gets the second pick to uh, Valhalla, uh, or Valhall. And this is what we read about in the lore. So it, it, it behooves us to think that there would be anybody other than literal physical warriors and, and, and battle-worthy uh, individuals that would even be considered to exist eternally in a place to, to, to be used in this sort of context, okay? Now, going outside of the mythology, going outside of the lore, um, the concept of an existence in an afterlife um, within the Norse uh, view of things um, is very complex um, because it goes beyond just what modern day, what a very... Uh, I guess you could say Christian view of the self embodies and exists in, right? Um, so for a lot of folks that are watching this, if you, especially if you have come into heathenry from a prior religion, um, whether it be an Abrahamic religion or whether it be any sort of other uh, spirituality path, but especially for those who come from a Christian uh, background, um, our sense of self as, as, as heathens is much more complex than the view of the, of the self or, and the person uh, than what you would see in Christianity. In, within Christianity and within a lot of those models of religion and, and spirituality, you're going to see yourself as, you know, uh, you have your, your, your physical self, you have your spiritual self, um, you have your, your mind, your body, and maybe even your soul. So at the most, you have three elements of the self that exist. Um, within that sort of view. Within a Norse heathen view, specifically, there are many more parts that exist of the self. And uh, this video is going to be sort of just a scratching of the surface idea of what those parts of self are. And let me know down in the comments if you think you'd like to hear more about this particular subject. But we have parts of the self within a Norse heathen uh, construct, or within a Norse heathen world. We have parts of ourself that are so, many, so much different. We have the Homer. Okay, the word's going to be up here on the screen. The Homer, or right up here. Somewhere here, you'll see the word Homer. That is our physical self. You have the Hygr, you know, which is our thought, the, 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 the thought, the mind uh, aspects of it. You have the Filgia. You have the parts of the self that exist um, outside of the physical realm that are attached to uh, our, um, our own selves, that, that, that tie our spiritual existence, our non-physical existence to the family, the filia. You have the hamingya, the sort of protective, almost guardian-esque um, spiritual bodies that, that exist and stuff. So we have so many parts, so many complex parts of ourselves that exist outside of our physical existence. When we die, where do the parts of ourselves go? And from a historical aspect, if you want to consider the fact that the idea or the concept of Valhalla didn't even exist in, in anything pre-Christian Scandinavia, at least so far as what we've been able to tell from our, from our written sources. Okay, um, whether you want to look at the Poetic Edda, whether you want to look at Snorri Sturluson's Prose Edda, those sources are during and after the conversion period of Scandinavia when there was a lot of Christian um, influence and elements being brought into it. So the idea of an afterlife that promoted the war band culture, the warrior class, the warrior cult culture of a society, the Germanic tribes uh, specifically, um, since they were so, uh, you know, uh, driven f f within conflict, you know, there was, a lot, there was a lot of, you know, fighting within the clans, there was a lot of fighting outside of the clans, you had a lot of, you know, raiding and things like that going on. All of these things promoted a warrior cult society. So it makes sense to me that during that time, during the conversion period, when the Christians were trying to influence the pagans to convert, that they had to have something, they had to have a, some sort of element that existed in their view of the, of the world, in their warrior class view of the world, that when you die, you go into some eternal, glorious, battle-ridden life of existence. Hence the whole Valhalla thing, okay? Now, are we that way now? Does that even exist now? Does that warrior cult, was that, does that warrior class, does that war band culture exist now so much in modern times? And I contest that it does not. We could have 
various tribes, various um, thades, various collectives, kindreds, whatever, of, of people who want to adopt a war band culture, that want to adopt, adopt this machismo, brosatru sort of idea. And I'm not trying to classify the thadish uh, heathens, the, 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 the historical heathens that, that adopt this sort of thing in, in a smaller collective. I don't want to try to lump them into this brosatru, you know, I'm a Viking, I go to Valhalla, I say skull, I say hail. You know, I drink from a horn, I wear bur, uh, bear fur shawls, I wear leather arm braces. You know, this is all just an aesthetic thing. Um, but for anybody that's out there that thinks that they're going to Valhalla because they, you know, watched the first three episodes of Vikings in, you know, 12 hours on a marathon run, um, and they've got a horn that they drink out of or whatever, and you're going to Valhalla because of that, like, hey guys, I hate to break it to you, but you're missing the mark big time. You guys that are the Thadish, the types the, that, 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 that follow a more you know, historical approach, that doesn't, I'm not trying to lump you into that demographic, but just realize everybody that this, this concept of an eternal life, an eternal existence in one specific place is very Christianized. Um, the, the Norse view, the, 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 the Germanic, you know, ancient Germanic, the ancient heathen view of the afterlife does not adopt a, uh, an idea of punishment versus reward. Our existence, our parts of the self that exist beyond our physical view of things, what you see right now, the flesh and blood of me, myself, the, the parts of myself that exist beyond me are going to exist in a way that is sort of molded by my deeds and my actions now. And therefore, parts of myself, the huger, the, the hamingya, the, the filia, those parts of myself are going to exist in different parts. If I am so good uh, in my existence now that I am deemed to be beneficial to my descendants, then parts of myself can exist here on this plane in, 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 a, in, a, in a way to be tied to my descendants. The rest of myself, other parts of myself are going to go into the ground, into the grave, into, the, into, the, into the, what's called the mound and to exist in this overall just eternal existence within hell, as we, as, as we read about. Um, I want to call to attention, uh, I believe, um, I'm going to put her name or, or their name of the author, the last name Davidson, I don't want to mispronounce or, or, or misrepresent the name, last name Davidson, but The Road to Hell. You guys check out this book, The Road to Hell, and this will give you a better concept of the afterlife in a sort of heathen world worldview, or, or you know, uh, the way things are are perceived, um, but it does not constitute, and it does not envelop the the concept of one s version of the self existing in one place because of you know, uh, I was a great warrior. I, I died in battle with the weapon that I was fighting in uh, in my hand. Um, and I, therefore, I'm going to, to Valhalla, okay? Um, so, again, this is a sort of just a very crash course view of things from, from, from one heathen's perspective, from my perspective. And um, I'm anxious to, to sort of hear and see what you guys think. And also, if you want me to pursue a video series of, of sorts, a small series of sorts, of the various parts of self, the complex of self. Um, within, a, within a, a heathen worldview or within a heathen view. Um, so let me know down in the comments what you guys think of, of that and if you want me to do that and I will, you know, I think I want to do it, but I would like to know if you guys want me to do it um, because otherwise if you don't want it, then there's no sense in me doing it. Um, so let me just say this before we end this video. I am not trying to say again that um, anybody out here who thinks that they're going to Valhalla is off their rocker and that they are just, you know, uh, just, just thinking out of their minds, you know, for whatever reason. I am delivering something of my research out to everybody that watches these videos just as a point of consideration, okay? Ultimately, what happens to us after we die, um, nobody knows, okay? So every culture, every society has had different views and different ideas of what happens when we die. Um, so there's nowhere for me to say that the Norse view of the afterlife is the way and, and, and that everybody else's way is, is a bunch of BS. You know, there, there's nothing for us to say that that is right. This is just a view that surrounds a culture and the culture 
that existed at the time that we're trying to pull back from is there was a huge dynamic uh, differences, right? You had your warrior cults, you had your 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 your, your normal day to day folks, you had your nobility. All sorts of things existed within that time frame that developed its own views of things. So, again, the warrior class, the warrior cult. Um, preparing for Ragnarok, being ready for Ragnarok, that sort of thing. Um, I've never done a video on Ragnarok, my own view of, of what Ragnarok is and, and whether it's happened, is it happening now, will it happen again, is it a cyclic thing? I've never done a video on that um, and that's another thing that I may actually do one day so let me know down in the comments if you think you'd like to see that. But this is a huge concept, this is a huge topic of discussion guys so I want to know what you guys think. Do you think that we as modern heathens can enter into what is deemed in the lore as the Hall of the Slain, the Hall of the Battle Fallen, Valhall. All right, if you think so, let me know down in the comments. If you don't, let me know down in the comments. Share your knowledge with everybody out here that's watching my videos. I want to thank you all so much for watching today's video. And again, if you haven't yet, please subscribe. Also down in the description, uh, if you've made it this far, down in the description area, there's a link tree link there's a bunch of ways that you can help support this channel by buying merchandise, rune sets, supporting through PayPal, Patreon, all that kind of fun stuff. Check out the links down below if it's anything that fits you. I greatly appreciate all of your support in watching today's video. Please share them around. Don't forget to like, comment, and share as well. I appreciate each and every one of you for watching today's video and supporting Midgard Musings for as long as you have. Hail, and I'll see you in the next one.